going to be using the same playstyle, going to be going into my uh, overdrive for my battery uh, just automatically without hitting Winter Soldier and going to be spamming SP1s from there on. And if you keep an eye on Winter Soldier's power rate, he is still gaining some power up, but it's so small. It's super negligible for sure. And again, if, if um, Punisher is reducing their combat power rate by 90% when he's in overdrive and collar tech is reducing about eight by 18% how the calculation here works is collar tech first reduces it by 18% so now he has a total of 82% combat power rate and then Punisher 2099 reduces it 82% by 90% so 90% of 82% would still not hit zero but it would be very very small so I have the description of the Collar Tech Mastery here, and this Mastery is going to be reducing the power generated in the opponents when they're hitting you or get hit by you by 18% when you're using a Tech Champion. And this is the description of Punisher 2099's Overdrive mechanic. And while in Overdrive, Punisher is going to be getting some extra attack rating and his attacks are going to be causing his opponent to gain 90% less power. So in the initial clip of this video I was explaining how the interaction between this mechanic and also the collar tech mastery works by saying that they're actually multiplicative because my testing there was actually done on a rank 5 defender. Realm of Legends Winter Soldier is a rank 5 defender so the testing was done on him and it actually didn't take account a pretty significant source of combat power rate. So in all my previous calculations I was ignoring the fact that characters gain extra combat power rate for each rank that they gain. So they start off with 100% base combat power rate at rank 1 and that goes up to 105% at rank 2, 110% at rank 3, all the way up to 120% at rank 5. So Winter Soldier there in my testing was a rank 5 defender and he was benefiting from 120% baseline combat power rate. So what that means for a champion like Punisher 399 or Gambit who can reduce combat power rate by 100% or even more, uh, well it basically means that as long as the opponent is low enough rank these characters can completely shut down their combat power rate by 100% and they wouldn't be getting any power. So let's test it out. All right, so this is a rank one six star, Joe Fixit. I have no idea what the nodes here are, but we should just go in there, see what we do. See how we do with Punisher. So I'm gonna just wait until Overdrive kicks in, not hit him until then, and hopefully I should be able to prevent all power gain. So one of the nodes here is definitely no retreat. Fun, good to know. Taking some degen damage, but I'm not really concerned about that. Just want to activate overdrive. Perfect. There you go. No power gain. I'm going to be spamming SP1s to stay in overdrive. Yeah, I've been I've been served a full dish of humble pie for sure. I actually got to know about this thanks to Kabam Broccoli. So he actually let me know about this interaction with Combat Power Rate. He happens to be the designer who made Doctor Doom, Apocalypse, and also his proudest achievement, Ebony Ma. And yeah, he's not getting any power. We can also go and test this against a rank 2 defender. So again, it doesn't matter what the rarity is. Let's just go and test against a rank 2 defender. And after some searching, I have finally come across a rank 2 defender. This Dark Spidey, here's a rank 2 champion. He should also be power locked by my overdrive. So let's just test it out. Let's just go into overdrive, the same kind of playstyle. He is going to have a baseline of 105% combat power rate, but my 108% reduction of it should be able to completely lock him out of gaining any power. So let's test it out. Yep, 
Yep, yep. He's not gaining any power. And it's not just from the hits that I'm landing when he's done, so... It's not just the impact of the Petrify Mastery. Now let's go try a rank 3 defender. That's where we should actually be able to notice some slight power gain. So here going up against this rank 3 DDHK, I'm going to try and use the same strategies, just basically activate overdrive without getting hit, without hitting him. And then from there on I'm going to be spamming the SP1 as much as possible and we'll see what happens here. This defender should have a residual 2% combat power rate left after subtracting Punisher 2099's total 108% reduction. So he has a baseline of 110% minus 108, that would be 2%. And as you see, he's starting to gain a sliver of power here. So that 2% is actually showing. Look at look at this. 99 hits in. And he actually has gained a sliver of power. So this is a tiny bit of power that he was actually supposed to be getting from all these hits. So what does this mean about combat power rate manipulation and actually the role it's going to play in the contest going forward? With more and more characters getting added, with some sort of combat power rate manipulation, with the recent examples being the buff to Gambit and also the buff to Punisher 2099. Well, I think this will simplify things going forward. My initial, my initial take on combat power rate was pretty complicated. There was no way to take it down to zero. And there was, you know, multiplicative calculations and it was a bit of a mess. So knowing that it's all additive, knowing that it's, you know, if you have a negative 100% and you have a rank 1 defender, you can just completely shut them down. It does simplify things and it also will simplify interactions with nodes and, and matchups that actually increase their own combat power rate. So for example, versus an energized node that has an additional 100% combat power rate granted to the defender. Now, if that defender is, for example, a rank five defender, that means that in order to take the combat power rate all the way down to 0%, you would need a total of 220% combat power rate reduction, which would be quite a bit. That's quite a bit of reduction there. And yeah, basically that's uh, how I feel about, about this revelation. I was definitely, definitely wrong about my initial take on the matter and I'm just glad to have learned something uh, out of this whole out of this whole situation. I hope y'all enjoyed watching this video. I hope maybe y'all also learned something from it. That's about it from this video and I'll catch y'all later. Bye!